Over 70 million Americans are obese and 99 million are overweight. So how can we tell if someone is obese or overweight? Well, they're fat, simple enough, right? On average, men in America have about 28% body fat and women have 41%. Now that is absolutely insane. Now the thing is that fat isn't bad. Fat is actually good for us. Fat is how we store extra calories or excess energy for later use. If we have a little bit of fat on us and then we're gonna go on a big hike, we can use this fat as a source of energy. The problem with fat is when it becomes visceral or surrounding our organs. So there are two types of fat that I wanna talk about, subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. Subcutaneous fat is the good fat. This is the fat that you want. And this is the fat that lies underneath your skin. And this is the safest place to store our fat or store our energy. And this is also important in keeping us metabolically healthy. And there was actually a study that showed this. There was a guy named Gerald Schumann who was a researcher in diabetes. And he took these mice that were insulin resistant. And he actually implanted them with fat cells. So he took these mice and made them even more fat. And what he found is very interesting. Their metabolic disorder actually improved almost immediately. Basically, this extra fat that he implanted into these mice, it sucked up all the extra glucose and stored it up so that now they became metabolically healthy again. So this is the purpose of fat. It is a storage mechanism. It kind of acts like a buffer. So let's say that you eat a pizza and then later on you need to go on a hike or you need to go on a mile run. Well, now you have this storage where you can use this fat as a source of energy to do whatever activity you wanna do. The problem with fat is when you exceed the amount that you can safely store. So now you start to get a little bit of spillover. Now you're probably not gonna like this analogy, but it's kind of like having a clogged toilet and you try to flush it. Well, what happens is that water starts to rise and spill over and only so much water is gonna fill that toilet. Eventually it's gonna pour out and all that disgusting stuff is gonna get all over the floor. This is the same thing with excess fat or excess energy or extra calories. It's all the same thing. When you have too much of it, it's not gonna be able to be stored subcutaneously or under your skin anymore. It's now gonna find other places. And this is when it starts to spread around your organs or for example, going into your liver. And this is especially true when you're not using that fat. So let's go back to the same scenario where you're eating the pizza and then you have to go on the hike later. Well, now you're eating the pizza, but your plan for the day is to sit in a hot tub and watch movies. Well, now that you're not using that fat, it's gonna be even more likely to spill over because more and more of it's gonna build up and it's not gonna be going away because you're just storing it and you're not using it. And when this extra fat starts to spread around your organs, this is when it turns into visceral fat. Now this is the bad fat. And actually when extra fat starts to penetrate into your liver like this visceral fat does, this actually mimics what looks like too much alcohol. So the same damage that alcohol does to your liver, the same thing will be done by fat. And it's not just your liver. All of your organs are gonna be surrounded by this visceral fat the more that you keep storing it. And this will cause a ton of problems with your body. One is this will cause a lot of inflammation around your body because the more fat you have, the more inflammation you'll have. And this will also lower your metabolic health. It'll make your insulin resistance worse and it'll make you at risk for so many other diseases like heart disease and cancer. And this is the problem with our modern diets because our ancestors did not have this problem. It was only recent where this problem developed. Our ancestors liked fat, they needed fat. And this is how our human bodies were evolved to actually use fat because unlike us, our ancestors had to survive long periods with no food. Now think about having to hunt for all of your meals and then winter comes and now you're stuck in a cold climate. Obviously you're gonna have times where it's gonna be really hard to eat and this is where your fat comes in because our ancestors used this fat for times where they were not eating for a long period of time. And on top of that, our ancestors were always on the move. They were always hunting, they were always moving. They weren't just laying around sedentary like we are now. And fat wasn't just to help them for periods where they were starving. It was also to help them when they got sick or even when they became pregnant. But the problem is now that our environment has changed so drastically in such a short amount of time that our evolution cannot keep up with it. There's no way that our genes can evolve fast enough to keep up with 
are environmental changes that have happened. And this is the problem that our metabolism right now, it cannot keep up with our diets and our lifestyle. Our bodies evolved to get fat and to survive under these conditions, but it did not evolve to eat a surplus of food and have endless options of food and be sedentary and be lazy and not work out and not use our bodies. Now, I'm not saying to go back to this hunter-gatherer lifestyle and to start hunting for your food and to start always be on the move and to go periods of time where you have to be stuck in cold climates and not be able to eat. That would suck. I really enjoy sleeping in my bed and being comfortable and being able to eat a surplus of food whenever I want to. But we can use this knowledge to help us with our modern day lifestyle to make sure that we are using our fat correctly. So the two biggest things are going to be intermittent fasting and working out. I talked a little bit about fasting before, but there are so many different ways of practicing. Like I said, you can do a whole day fast where basically one day you are just not eating anything and then the next day you go back to eating. Or you can even do where you fast one day a week. I know some people that do that. Or what I like to do is a time-restricted eating where I eat just two meals a day and my eating window is between 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. For the rest of the day, I am not eating anything. And in between those two meals, I'm also not eating anything. We cannot rely on evolution to take care of our fat problem or take care of our modern day diets. It takes hundreds of thousands of years for even the slightest of slightest changes to happen in evolution. And it takes millions of years for something noticeable to happen. So in our lifetime, good luck. You're not going to be able to rely on that. Over 13% of Americans suffer from some form of asthma. And this puts them at a huge disadvantage compared to other people. And most people think that the only way to deal with their asthma is to keep suffering and to carry an inhaler everywhere. And some people even give up exercising